Great. We are back with AWS on air from the live streaming desk over here. We've got the expo in the background. I'm Gigi Berenger, one of your hosts. I'm here with my friend Art, who's also one of our hosts today. Do you want to say hi, Art? Sure, Gigi. <laughs> uh, hi, Gigi. I'm excited hi. to be back. And I get to hold up a little hi. sticker here. I don't know if we can zoom in, but we're having a little like Greek mythology yes, discussion here. It's All pretty right. good. Does anyone know what it is? I, or maybe we should introduce Denise. We should let Denise introduce herself and her service, I yeah. think. All right. All right. She's Denise. earned it with this launch. Art, yeah, Art and Gigi, it's so, great to, it's so great to meet you. My name is Denise Gosnell. I'm a principal product manager on the Amazon Neptune team. Fantastic. Here to talk about our launch from yesterday, which is Amazon Neptune Analytics. So. This guy that you are holding, this is Poseidon, and of course we had to create uh, we had to create a, a little uh, character for him used yeah. by Gen AI art. So that is a Gen AI generated Poseidon in the theme of Gremlin. So for the graph people out there, that is a. Uh, that is it's how awesome. Kind of put that I know it's super okay. shiny, so I don't think many people out there can probably, many people can see it really really well. But it, I can assure you, it's cool. It's cool. That's all that matters. That's right. That's Limit, that limited edition, one time only print. Art and Gigi, you guys are in, on the in crew here. I love that. I didn't know that we could make stickers for launches specifically. I'm going to have to start making stickers when I launch new features. This is amazing. Cool. Yeah. But with the so date maybe, and everything. Maybe we should start with defining what is Neptune and what is the new yeah. feature here. Sorry, Gigi. I think Gigi. that's a great idea. <laughs> that is a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So um, Amazon Neptune is AWS's umbrella brand for working with graphs in the AWS cloud. So we have Neptune databases that have immense scalability and durability for you know, like 100,000 queries per second. And uh, we also have Neptune ML, which is where our customers are using graph neural networks, like the Deep Graph Library and now GraphStorm, uh, to do real-time prediction as their data is streaming into Neptune Graph Database. And then the third main feature of Neptune that we're here to talk about today is that we launched yesterday and we're very excited about it is Amazon Neptune Analytics. It's a new analytics database engine for Amazon Neptune so that you can get insights from your data about 80 times faster. Uh, yeah, wow. which is, which is <laughs> a lot faster. I heard our collective wow there, <laughs> Gigi. Yeah. 80 times 80 faster. Times. Absolutely, yeah. Oh so one of, the main, one of the main innovations we have is that we made data loading into Neptune Analytics insanely fast, 10 million edges per second, because Gigi, we were talking about how you've been working with graphs before. Yeah. And uh, being able to load data in so quickly to then study it is exactly where people need to start. And I totally skipped over what is a graph, right? We We'd just love dove. to know what a graph database is yeah. and what a graph is. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. And it might not be the graph that you learned to draw in school. Right. With, unless Which it is. is. Well, it is not, but <laughs> just fun side note here, I had to register for a class to fill my schedule because I was locked out of everything required for my degree, and I had to take this graph theory class, and I thought it was going to be like pie, pie charts, bar graphs. Yeah. Within five minutes, I saw Dr. Teresa Haynes draw like a friends of a friend's connection about your Very data. Cool. And I just, I had like one of those goosebump moments. I was like, I want to study this for the rest of my life. And so now you're doing it. I am, yeah. I got my PhD uh, doing graph data science and computer science and uh, Amazing. been working yeah. in the graph database industry using Gremlin uh, open source tech for about 10 years now. So uh, very glad to be here. But graph, graph data is all about representing the relationships that connect the important pieces of your data together. Okay. Yeah. In an actual database. So when we sat down, we were talking about how we worked, you know, who do we know in common? And as natural humans in conversation, we were starting to paint that picture together of how we might know each other through common friends. And that's exactly what a graph is. Uh, so other applications, you know, obviously when you were in social networks, it's a very natural way to look at the relationships between people. That's an example of a graph. Uh, Wiz is a customer of ours where they are using uh, the security posture of, the, of your accounts to connect together IP addresses and find vulnerabilities and even show you Very that nice. information as a graph. So it just it's a much more natural way to talk about data. We all as humans already talk about data that way. Mm -hmm. So to be able to see Neptune help to close that gap between how you think about data and how we use technology, it just makes it so much easier for business people and uh, for C-levels to make data-driven decisions in their companies because that gap between what it means and the tech is just so much shorter. And I so, think it's, yeah, sorry, Gigi. Oh, no, you go first. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, it, this explanation of graph data is Easy. one of the best explanations <laughs> I've seen in a super while. So, helpful. Denise, I'm super excited. <laughs> and also, everyone talks about being a data-driven organization, but mm. sometimes it's really hard to formulate those relationships between the data. So using these graphs is a great way for whether, not just C-level employees, but everyone who is trying to absorb data. And it's kind of like in the line 
alignment with how we all think is what you're really yeah. saying, right? It just gives you interesting ways to take a look at it. I mean, absolutely. Whenever you approach a new situation, a new person, you think about the context that you would have between how you relate to it. Boom, that's a graph. It's yeah. Amazing. So I have a question. If you mentioned that this is something that, you know, we think of C-suite being able to better understand data because of this. It's more, it's closing that gap of how we think about data. Who is your end user that's accessing Neptune? Who is that user story, that user profile that you know benefits most from Neptune? Abs well, absolutely. So for the demo that we're going to take a look at today mm -hmm. with uh, Amazon Neptune Analytics, the end user is targeted right at data scientists okay. and data engineers who are trying to work with their data uh, and to run algorithms, study it, and understand it. Because graphs are, more, graphs are new. Right. We're really trying to bring graphs to the majority of people who have data because the amount of people who use graphs are very small, but everyone has data. Mm -hmm. And when you are think when you think about the first time you ever stored your data in a relational database, right? Maybe you had a column that was some type of category. Yeah. One of the first questions you wanted to ask was, well, how many of this category and each of these types do I have? And those are analytical type questions. And so what we're able to deploy and do now with Amazon Neptune Analytics is give you a way to have your data, even in S3, like you can just have your graph data sitting in S3. Okay. You can create a graph, load it in super fast, and then just use a Jupyter notebook to start asking questions. Amazing. You can, uh, it has vector search with it. So you, if you have embeddings in this demo, we have one trained from the hugging face models, and you can combine vector similarity search with graph algorithms, with running graph queries. Uh, you can write those results back because you, have a dur you have durability in Neptune Analytics as well. Uh, and so when we are looking at, the, at what we're really trying to do here, we're trying to make it easier for getting started with graph data because your first questions are always about, well, I've just modeled this data as a graph and I know that that structure is there, but what does it really mean? Like yeah. how many edges do I have between me and Gigi or how far away between me and Gigi and Art is our actual friendship before we all just became best friends today? Yeah. <laughs> right? So. Yeah. Uh, be giving data scientists that ability to very straightforward and quickly start analyzing their data is what we're doing here with Neptune Analytics. Fantastic. Right. I think that's a good segue into seeing it. I need to see it. I need to see it. Yeah. I'm excited. Like it's demo time. Absolutely. Well, Art, if I can get you to create a graph at the end of this, then we're going uh -oh. to be in a good place. <laughs> that's a <laughs> <See>? tall order. <laughs> Art <laughs> focuses a lot on EC2. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, about, I don't know how, how you are in the database or how... I, yeah, you know what? Earlier yesterday, last night, I was spending my time, GG, doing some coding. Yeah. And I was demoing the coding for my uh, session, and everyone was successfully building. And I, you know, managed <laughs> to like be the only one in the room as the instructor who, yeah, they're really, still recovering. You you really split the gap between you know you you delivered what you were supposed <laughs> to, but I maybe did, maybe but you <laughs> didn't accomplish while simultaneously <laughs> delivering. That's impressive. That's I know. impressive. So well, if we could get your screen up once they pop yeah. it up, then yeah. you are ready to go. Amazing. All right, here we go. All right, here great. We go. So what, uh, what, where we are right now is we are just at the AWS Management Console. And so this is the, a new feature that you can search for. You can search for Neptune. We're going to head on over there. And I am in the Ohio region, by the way. Uh, Neptune Analytics deployed in seven regions around the world. Great. Uh, two in Europe and two in APAC. And for those who are... Uh, used to Neptune, you'll see here, we've got a new left side pane where you can come down here to the analytics section and you can come over here to graphs. And so what we're gonna do here for this first uh, bit is we are going to go ahead and we're gonna create our first graph art. All right, oh I'm thrilled. <laughs> do we have data in this account? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, we're, we're, gonna, yeah. we're gonna load, oh, that's a really great point. Uh, so as a part of this launch, we have some public S3 buckets with a ton of training material. Fantastic. And we have uh, so an Edgar data set. The okay. Edgar data set was created, uh, there's a, there's, this is an open source data set. We put it into a graph and it represents all of the uh, investments of the wealthiest, uh, wealthiest investment firms uh, in the world. So if you have quarter over, if, in one quarter, if you have more than $100 million in assets, you have to file this uh, thir ruling 13F anyways. The Edgar data set brings all that out so that we can look at patterns between investors and the holdings that they've had to take a look at, well, who is, who is growing the most quarter and quarter and what's their pattern of what they're investing in? So that's kind of what we're going to look at here in a moment. Wow. Perfect. Okay. okay. I'm going right. to learn a lot about a lot of things. 
<laughs> not Jeff's <laughs> Neptune. By the time we're done <laughs> yeah. here, you're going to be getting your phone out and doing investments. <laughs> I'm ready to G <laughs> When bingo. you go bingo, it's going to be Gigi's in Millionaire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's a good thing we're in Vegas. So I can start investing. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Take that right out to the tables yeah, I don't no. know how to play at. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'll, stick, I'll stick with analyzing graphs of investment firms. But anyways, uh, so to create a Neptune Analytics graph, you're going to come in here and uh, you just want to give it a unique name. So this is the 30th. I'm going to make an Edgar data graph right there. And to what we were talking about, we're going to create a graph from an existing S3 bucket of public data. Uh, so we're going to make that. But before we put the S3 bucket link in here, the way that you uh, pay for Neptune Analytics is through a memory, optimi memory optimized Neptune credit unit. Okay. And that's a one-on-one -on -one relationship between the gigabytes that you would need to actually run your analytic workload. Okay. And we just provision all of the infrastructure and uh, necessary to do that. Got so it. we're just gonna we're gonna use the smallest one here to load this data set up and play with it. So it's managed in that with the compute power sense. It is, yeah. Okay. So you just specify the amount of MNCU that you need for your graph, and then we'll handle the provisioning of the infrastructure on for you, everything necessary, uh, so that you can just work with your graph instead of having to work with all the infrastructure behind the scenes. Simplicity, GG. Simplicity. simplicity is I, the theme, right, yeah. of what we've simplicity been Simplicity is my theme of the week. Yes. Um, it's my word of the day as well. Uh, yeah. um, I, we're just trying to make it straightforward. That's why, I'm, that's why I was so excited to join the Amazon Neptune team. I've been in the GraphDB industry for a while, and their vision for making graphs straightforward to use, it's just it's pretty cool. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. So if you've never used this, how do you know what size to choose? So it's a it's a one-to-one -one on GBs of how okay. much that you're going to be loading into it. So we say about 60% of the data file on disk is the best way to choose because we've got to provision other infrastructure for the vector search index and right. other things that you might want to use. And that's uh, that's in the documentation. It is. So I don't have to remember that. Yeah. No, you're okay. good. You're good. <laughs> and you I know what? Google if that every time if I need. <laughs> if it's not, someone should tweet me because I should probably oh, have made sure yeah. it was in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's know <laughs> where you're accessible via, via, <laughs> via Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or X now. Yeah. Um, so we're going to put this in. Where are we? We're in US West 2. Yeah. Yes. That was USS1. All right, so US West 2, here is the public bucket. I just did an S3 read-only roll. Uh, we don't need any replicas for this graph, uh, but it is it is just good to note that if you do have availability requirements, you can have some warm standbys for your graphs if you need okay. to fail over, things like that. Uh, here's my favorite part. You can allow your graph to be accessible from the public. Uh, you can set it up behind a VPC. You can. Um, but what that's going to do is when you make your graph, you're going to get a graph endpoint. And then I'm going to show you here in a second how to just change that endpoint in your Jupyter Notebook and then done. You're ready to write queries on the graph. This is awesome. Done. Yeah. And just to confirm, so the data is in US West 2. Oregon. It is, but and we we're sitting in Ohio, so we can reach data from a different region. Uh, you're, uh, we're sitting in Ohio, so let me not put West too, since that was an east. error. Yeah. All right. Thank I, you. I googled that on the side just to make sure. Oh well, hey, I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I saw that. I thought Denise knew more than I, I did, thought so I thought. Okay, you guys are so kind. Anything. No, that was just the demo gods already getting in on this. All right, all right, let's. We're battling them with our with our Poseidon. <laughs> That's all right. right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I love it, Gigi. Yeah. Way yeah. to work in Poseidon. Thank I love you. it. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So we're gonna go ahead and set up a vector dimension because we did use Hugging Face to create vectors. Uh, so we took all the we used Amazon Bedrock to get descriptions about each of these holding companies. And then you can you can use the Titan model to create different embeddings, but we just had something up with Hugging Face real quick. Uh, so we used Bedrock to uh, get the descriptions of these companies, and then we made embeddings to represent them. And we're storing those embeddings on the investors in the graph. Okay. So that you can start by saying, well, I need to find all similar investors using this embedding. So that's what we're going to do here with our vector search. I'm going to turn off delete protect protection so I can delete this later. And let's go ahead and create the graph. It's game time now, GG. It is. All right. I'm excited. So this graph is building, and when you do this together, we are creating the graph, and then we're also going to automatically load up that data for you at about 10 million statements per second. So it's going to be incredibly fast for loading it in. Holy moly. And here's here's the piece to show you. It's like uh, when an F1 car goes by. I know, like, that right? was fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's the yes. same with databases. <laughs> yes. So when you create a graph, you can come in here, and you're going to be able to create. Uh, you'll see here when your graph endpoint pulls up. Uh, but given the time that we have left, what I do want to show you guys is the notebooks and how to how to work with them yeah. here. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah. But that's a quick that's just a quick example of how to go ahead and make your graphs when you are using Amazon Neptune Analytics. Fantastic. Thank so, you. Yeah, you're welcome. So from there, you uh, when you are working with it, we have a bunch of notebooks that you can use. Um, and so when you're coming in to get started with Neptune Analytics, you might want to get to a notebook 
and learn about our algorithms that we have. We've got native, native algorithms in this for doing pathfinding, like find me the connections I had between me and art before this, or find communities uh, in the graph. Now we're all gonna be like this tight little AWS on air community, right? Uh, we've got a bunch of algorithms that you can use and I'll show you how to invoke them here. Uh, nice. But go ahead and take a tour through those notebooks, especially if you're learning about graph algorithms. Our uh, team has been working so hard to help you guys get material to learn about them. Uh, so now that we have created this graph, Here's a quick data model to show you what is in this data set. We have holders or investor firms, and they have their investments by quarter. So this is gonna be for the entire fourth quarter of 2023. And these are all the filings that we had accessible to at the time uh, from the Edgar data set. And we're gonna model the actual holder, their quarter, and then every single individual investment or holding that they owned in that quarter. And you can see we have the value here. So as we go through this, we're gonna start finding the top investors who have the most money. So that uh, after this, maybe you have something for playing. Uh, yeah, perfect. that's right. Uh, for, for playing the playing the stocks <laughs> or playing. Yes, yes. I think that's what we have to start. With. I think that's smart. Given um, this maybe, data. Yeah. <laughs> so to get started with these notebooks, um, you just have to import this this simple configuration. As a data scientist, this is super easy, and I really enjoy how simple they've made it and straightforward for getting started. All you have to do is copy your graph endpoint from the one that we're loading over there. Okay. And you just need to set the endpoint of this notebook to the one that is already up. And then you're ready to go to start running queries and working with your graph data. Fantastic. Wow. We already wow. loaded the data, so just I'm going to skip by this. So pardon the scroll for those watching, uh, watching Close this notebook. Close your eyes real quick. Yeah. Don't get a headache. Yeah. So the first thing that we want to do <laughs> nice. is we want to go from, so this is a pattern matching query in a graph. So when you're working with graphs, you have to start learning new languages, right? Mm -hmm. And what you're looking at is the open cipher language. It looks most like SQL. So I think that it's the easiest for getting started. And the favorite part about working with graphs is that we try and find these patterns when you have certain relationships connecting edges together. You want to look for patterns of structure. And that's what this match statement is, do is doing. You're looking for holders that have certain paths to certain holdings for the quarter of Q4 2023. And then we're going to go ahead and go to all of their assets, sum them up, and then we can see that Raymond James has been very busy and they're doing very well. Oh. <laughs> right? Cool. Uh, so Raymond James for that quarter had the most uh, total value of assets that you can see over here. But let's go ahead and let's do two more things. I would like to... So many commas, Gigi. It's, well, there's no commas. No there comma. There should I mean, be so a many lot of big. commas. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm... There yeah. you go. All right. I, I would need to, you know, do the like, <laughs> hand thing on the screen and count my three. <laughs> three decimal points. I'm with you, time. Gigi. Yeah. yeah well, All right. And, but how simple was that, right? To like yeah. find a data set and then look at patterns of the top investors and then we can look at what they've been investing in. And the in. speed and that the we're speed. able to do this. I mean, m tens of millions of parameters a second you said you were processing, we right? can, You can load into the graph tens of millions of statements per second and you can analyze the whole, you can analyze billions of edges in seconds. Wow. This is. And when you analyze that, just one more question, can you see it or where do you, where do you get that? that last output. You can. So uh, in uh, in our Jupyter Notebooks, I don't have this one uh, teed up for you right it's now. Okay. So look at that. I just didn't meet I the bar here. No, <laughs> you definitely exceeded the bar. It's okay. <laughs> um, but what you can do, we have notebooks. We've got two visualization tools. Jupyter no our graph notebooks uh, do have a way to display the results as a graph in them. So as Great. a data scientist, you're writing queries, and you can look at it. Uh, and then also, we have a Graph Explorer tool that is an open source uh, React app that we have in a Docker container on GitHub. And uh, you can connect it up uh, to your graphs in the Neptune suite and actually get that click-through experience of navigating uh, navigating your, your data with some open source tech that we've Fantastic. released. So, wow. Yeah, Thank that's you. awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. We are just about running out of time. So I'd love for you to tell those who are watching where they can find you, where they can find Getting Started Guides, all the content, whatever it might be. Absolutely. Um, so we are here this week over at the AWS booth. And you can, uh, AWS Village back here. So you can find us. Um, to find me personally, Personally, you're always welcome to reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn at Denise K. Gosnell. Uh, and uh, you can email us uh, at the Neptune team to get a hold of us. Great. And to get started, I couldn't recommend anything better than firing up a graph, getting into our notebooks, and we've got all the training material that you need there to start learning about graph algorithms and vector search. Perfect. Thank Perfect. you so much. This was awesome. This, this is, is great. really great. Yeah. Thank you, Denise. <laughs>